my name is Megan. Um, I live and teach in northern Manitoba. I first went on the Rwanda course back in 2010. I was studying English language and literature with a minor in history. And I also went back for a second year the next year as a TA for the course because I, I loved it so much. Uh, it's definitely one of the highlights of my life and it led directly to other experiences that are also some of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had in my life. Rwanda is one of those magical countries, I feel, that when you go there, uh, you instantly fall in love with it and it, it becomes part of you for the rest of your life and you'll get memories and flashbacks of these amazing situations uh, for, forever, really. Um, one of my favorite memories was randomly uh, us all ending up crashing the presidential gala. In essence, we, we had received, not all of us, a couple uh, had received invitations during this one event to the presidential gala that was being held that night. Uh, and our professor, Henri, decided that we, we all had to have these and somehow managed to get us all invitations. And by the end of the night, we were sitting at President Kagami's gala dinner between uh, the Minister of Defense and the Minister of IT talking about politics and trying to act and, and speak like we deserved to be there, uh, which we did not. <laughs> But uh, it, it turned out amazing. And, you know, you have these experiences that wouldn't happen anywhere else. Uh, and those are memories that you just will cherish uh, forever. Um, I, I'm still close and I'm still friends with not only people that I went on the trip with, but people that I, that I met there at some of the different organizations we worked with. Um, people from the Gisimba Orphanage that I met as kids who are now adults and I've kept in touch with them since, since then. Uh, and it's amazing to have these connections with people that are so far away and uh, have such a different way of life, but there's something that, that connects you. So if, if you have the opportunity to go, um, I would not hesitate to say, just do it. Uh, you won't regret it. And you'll have some of the most amazing experiences of your life. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I traveled to Rwanda in 2011. I returned as a guest of the class in 2012 and then again in 2014. Right now I'm working as a full-time high school and English French teacher in Kitchener, Ontario. My love of traveling was sparked at an early age, but it wasn't until I went to Rwanda that I truly learned um, how to move from tourist to service learner and how to put a proper emphasis on intercultural competency. And I used that competency in Rwanda by engaging with entirely new people and new places in a way that honored their local identities and histories. I used these same skills when I went to Bogota, Colombia. I spent a year teaching English to Colombian soldiers who had been injured during active duty, which was a hugely rewarding experience. And that led me to getting my dream job as a high school teacher in Ontario. And I still use those same skills of intercultural competency to teach from a framework of equity and inclusion and to um, create classroom environments that acknowledge and celebrate and honor the diverse identities of the people who are in my classes. And I truly don't think that these skills and expertise would have been as sharply honed if I had not gone to Rwanda in the first place. Uh, in Rwanda, I volunteered my time at Gisimba Memorial Center all three times that I went. And in the mornings, I uh, helped the English teachers teach English lessons to the primary school kids. And then in the afternoon, I organized social experiences for the people on the orphanage side of the center. Um, it's hard to specify one, my favorite memory of Rwanda because there are so many, but truly one of my most favorite memories was the afternoons that I spent at Gisimba working with and uh, hanging out with people who were closer to my age. There was one young man in particular, his name was Paul, and he would come and watch the activities, but he would not participate because he was very shy and quiet and he was embarrassed about his English level. But over the five weeks, I was able to chip away and um, get to know him. And then closer to the end, he shared his story with me, which truly felt like a gift because it had been um, it had taken such a long time to get to know him. And he talked about his experiences of being a four year old and surviving the 1994 genocide against 
as the Tutsis. And that was a very sobering experience, but it was um, truly a gift to me to be able to hear his story and um, to be able to become his friend. And uh, I, I value the service learning framework that we learned before we even arrived in Rwanda because it led to a much more rich and valuable experience for both Paul and myself. And I truly don't think that a passing tourist would have had the same experience and had made the same connection because it took a lot of trust on both our parts and it took a lot of time. It took weeks. Um, and we still message each other weekly on Facebook, so I'm very lucky to count him as a friend. These cross-cultural experiences taught me to reach across the divides that separate people and has given me the skills necessary to meet new people and embrace new experiences that I never would have before.